to ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that a discussion of a two-tier health service is recorded in draft minutes of a meeting of NHS Board Chief Executives in September. Cabinet Secretary Hamza Yousaf. The meeting uh, the member references was an informal meeting of a small number of NHS directors, not a meeting of NHS Chief Executives. The draft note of the discussion uh, does not represent the view of NHS Chief Executives. The founding principle of our National Health Service as a universal service, free at the point of use, publicly funded and publicly delivered for all, they are not up for debate nor indeed discussion. From abolishing prescription charges to removing dental charges for young people, this government has a laudable track record in dismantling any financial barriers that continue to exist in a National Health Service. Let me repeat, while reform undoubtedly is necessary in the face of a global pandemic, that reform will never, ever be in contradiction of the founding principles of our NHS. Alex Rowley. Presiding officer, back in February, I raised with the Deputy First Minister that we were heading into a two-tier health service. I have repeatedly raised the issue time and again in and out of Parliament since then. Now, I heard Hamza Youssef say yesterday and confirm today that it will never happen. And Nicola Sturgeon stated that the Scottish Government will not rip up the founding principles of the NHS, but it is happening, and it's happening right now. If you need an operation, a knee or a hip operation, and you can afford that, then you will get it. If you have savings and you can pay for it, you will get an operation. And if you are able to borrow the money to pay for it, then you will get an operation. But for those who can do none of these, they suffer in pain on long waiting lists. I reiterate, we are already falling into a two-tier health system. I have to ask, does the Cabinet Secretary understand the enormity of the situation of the crisis our NHS here in Scotland is in? We have had the COVID recovery plan, a winter plan, a workforce plan, a delayed discharge plan, and despite all of these things are getting worse. No wonder NHS chiefs are thinking in this way, because these plans are not working. So what is next? What is the challenge and what is the answer? Cabinet Secretary. To, to Alex Riley, I mean, he touches upon some very uh, important points, but can I say to him, we cannot underestimate the impact, not just of the global pandemic, of, of course, Brexit and the impact that had on our social care workforce, something I know he recognises. And, of course, the impact of high inflation costs and energy costs on our health service. Any one of these factors was enough to cause significant challenges in our health and social care systems. The fact that we've been hit by all three, not just in quick succession, in fact, some of them concurrently, is causing huge impacts on our health service, not just here in Scotland, but right across the UK. And the simple answer to uh, the member's questions. Uh, we are working and investing in, for example, reducing those long waits for, for elective care. In fact, Public Health Scotland's most recent published data shows that we're making progress in both inpatients and outpatients who are waiting the longest two years uh, or indeed longer. There's still a way to go. Uh, what I would also say uh, to the member is that we are making progress when it comes to our investment in social care, because I believe that social care is at the heart of this. I believe that if we are going to improve accident and emergency performance, if we're going to improve waiting times for elective care, having capacity uh, is really important. And therefore, our investment, our focus, my unrelenting focus, is on how to improve that flow within our hospitals and investing in our social care so we can get people out the back door, but also preventing them coming in the front door is where our focus will be. So reform is necessary. But what I'll repeat to Alex Rowley is that reform will always take place within the parameters of the founding principles of our National Health Service. Can I just um, ask members for concise uh, questions and answers, and that way more members will have an opportunity to take part. Alex Rowley. But, President Officer, we are already slipping into a two-tier health service where if you can afford to pay, then you will get it. If you can borrow, you will get it. But if you can't afford to pay, you will suffer in pain for years upon years of a waiting list. So can I suggest to the Cabinet Secretary that firstly we need to prioritise getting a fair pay agreement for the workforce. 
pause the ill-considered so-called National Care Service and focus on tackling the immediate underlying causes of the workforce crisis in social care, which you are failing to do? And can I suggest the Government be more open with the public about the current use and cost of using private sector in Scotland's NHS? In truth, does the Cabinet Secretary not see that we need a non-partisan approach to reviewing all aspects of the NHS in Scotland, our hospitals and our community provision, so that we can build a sustainable NHS free at the point of need moving forward? And otherwise, to fail to do that, do you agree that you are in danger of running Scotland's NHS into the ground? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I thank uh, Alice Riley for that question? On the issues that he raises on fair pay in, in about 38 minutes, uh, I'll be uh, sitting around the table with trade unions to try to hammer out uh, a deal. I think it's uh, to their credit and, and, and I hope uh, to the credit of all the parties involved that we are continued to be prepared, all of us, to sit down to get a deal to avert strike action. None of us want to see industrial action at any time, let alone uh, during the course of this winter. So I look forward to those discussions. I won't give any details of that here. I think it's important we do that uh, in that uh, confidential negotiating uh, space. But of course, if there is any breakthroughs, uh, we'll make sure members are indeed updated on the National Care Service. I'm more than happy to sit down with Alex Rowley, indeed with any of his colleagues, to discuss the National Care Service. Nobody's waiting for the National Care Service to make improvements now to social care. It's why we've invested in interim care why we've invested in step-down care, why we've invested to increase uh, the pay of adult social care workers. In terms of a non-partisan approach, I'm very happy uh, to, to, to have those uh, discussions with the opposition, uh, as I do regularly. Like Alex Rowley, I don't want people to have to think that the only option for them is to go uh, private. But what I would say is that in Scotland, our rates uh, of those individuals who do go private by the, the, the data uh, that's been published by Private Health Informa the Information Network shows that rates are lower here in Scotland than they are in other parts of the UK. But the way to tackle this is to make sure that we get our social care and healthcare systems uh, working across the piece so that we can have that capacity within our hospitals and bring, bring down those waiting times. Okay, um, I will ask members again if we can have brief questions and responses, and I call Sandesh Gulhani. Thank you. I would like to start by commending the BBC reporting this meeting despite the abuse they are receiving online for daring to be free journalists. In addition to the two-tier health service, the minutes of this meeting of NHS bosses describe concerns about a lack of clinical input into political decision-making, a disconnect between messaging from the Scottish Government and the reality that the boards are facing, and siloed discussions within the Scottish Government. Will the Cabinet Secretary commit to ask Audit Scotland to investigate the controversy and details surrounding this meeting? It, it, it's genuinely, it is genuinely laughable that Dr Sanders Kohani thinks this is a really good use of Audit Scotland's time to investigate an uh, informal meeting where one NHS chief executive was there uh, and, of course, as I've said, does not represent the view neither of NHS chief executives nor NHS chairs nor the chief executive of the NHS nor the chief operating officer and, may I say, most importantly, by anybody in government because we are the ones, of course, that decide the policy of the National Health Service. So no, I won't ask Audit Scotland. He can ask Audit Scotland if they think that is a good use uh, of their time. But what I would say to Dr Sandish Gohani is that we, have, uh, we should be judged on our deeds. And of course, this Scottish Government abolished prescription charges. We removed dental charges for young people. We continue to fund free eye tests. We scrapped car parking charges in our hospitals. And of course, uh, when the Conservatives uh, were presented with a Lord's Amendment in Westminster to take the NHS off future trade deals, of course, the Conservatives were whipped to vote against that amendment. And, of course, one of those individuals uh, not present in the Chamber today was one Douglas Ross MP. So the threat of privatisation doesn't come from this SNP government. It comes from the Conservatives refusing to rule out the NHS in any future trade deal. And that's where the threat to the privatisation of the NHS comes. Emma Harper. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his unequivocal statement that under an SNP government, the NHS in Scotland will always be a public service free at the point of need. 
and ensuring that the NHS has the right staff is vital. And does the Cabinet Secretary agree that, as well as investing in training and recruitment, that we must also seek to attract staff from overseas to make Scotland and the NHS our home? And does he share my disappointment that Keir Starmer seems content to use anti-immigration rhetoric on a par with Nigel Farage? Um, I regret that that question is largely not relevant to the substantive question, and I call Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. And I will make the commitment today to the Cabinet Secretary that every time he seeks to deflect his government's role in the NHS crisis by reference to the pandemic, I'll remind him of the words of former Chief Executive of NHS Scotland, Paul Gray, who said this crisis was always coming because of SNP mismanagement, regardless of COVID. And, Presiding Officer, today there is a new Public Health Scotland report which says that the burden of disease in this country, and by extension on our NHS, is set to rise by 21% over the next 20 years. The pressure on our NHS is nowhere near its peak yet. So can I not suggest to the Cabinet Secretary this is a damning verdict on the SNP's handling of the health service and that senior bosses are even discussing extreme proposals like this is a reflection of how bad things got on his watch. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, for somebody who has made a lot in the last couple of weeks about uh, ensuring that the, 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 uh, the accuracy of the parliamentary record, he may want to reflect on what he has said about directly quoting Paul Gray. I'm sure uh, people will be poring over that quote to make sure uh, Paul Gray has not been uh, misquoted. Uh, what I would say to Alex Cole Hamilton is once again, of course, that if he thinks that he can put his head in the sand and deny the impact of Brexit, the global pandemic, and of course the high cost of inflation and the cost crisis uh, inflicted upon us by the Conservative government, then I don't know genuinely what planet uh, he is living on. What I would say uh, to Alex Cole Hamilton, nobody is arguing with him that reform of the NHS is necessary. We have discussions regularly around reform, but that is always within the parameters of the founding principles of the National Health Service. In terms of where the public are and, and, and who is best to, to, to judge uh, in relation to the performance of the NHS, uh, the public have their say uh, every, uh, every uh, election uh, in terms of who they believe uh, should be trusted with stewardship of the NHS. And I would just ask Alex Cole Hamilton to reflect why he is leading a party uh, that has four MSPs in this building, while time and time and time again the people of Scotland trust the SNP with stewardship of the NHS.